Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering all topics related to Elon Musk's brain interface company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this update episode, I'm going to share the following. Neuralink got a breakthrough device designation from the FDA for their second product, Blindsight, which will help blind people see. I'll share how that product will work and what it means for Neuralink to get this designation. I'll highlight Elon's posts on X that are specifically related to Neuralink, and then I'll showcase some work from this group at UC Davis who accurately converted attempted speech, or thoughts, to text with nearly 98% accuracy. After that, I'll share some noteworthy things Neuralink's first participant, Nolan, has shared, including messages that provide inspiration and hope to many. I'll fill you in on all the context we have about the second participant. And lastly, I'll discuss something I'm calling the Apple problem. It specifically relates to the lack of new features on the iPhone, which could be a problem Neuralink will solve indirectly in the future. According to the World Health Organization, there are around 50 million people in the world who are blind. And with Neuralink's second product, Blindsight, the team has surpassed their first major milestone in helping these people more fully experience the world. Neuralink broke the news on X saying, we have received breakthrough device designation from the FDA for Blindsight. I'm gonna share what this means, but first listen to this clip from the Neuralink team member spearheading this effort, Dan Adams explaining how this product will work. My name's Dan and I came to work at Neuralink after following a career in visual neuroscience research. I was inspired to join this company because I saw in our device the potential to restore vision to people rendered blind by eye injury or disease. This is a schematic of what a visual prosthesis using our N device might, N1 device might look like. A camera, the output from a camera would be processed by an iPhone, for example, which would then stream the data to the device and the image would be converted into a pattern of stimulation of the electrodes into visual cortex. With a thousand electrodes, we might be able to produce an image resembling something that you see there on the right. But as Avanesh told you, our next generation of the device will have 16,000 electrodes. If you put a device on both sides of your visual cortex, that would give you 32,000 points of light to make an image in someone who's blind. Our goal will be to turn the lights on for someone who's spent decades living in the dark. I personally find this incredibly inspiring. Truly consider how game-changing this could be for you or a loved one if you lost your vision and potentially had no hope of ever being able to see again. If you simply had the prospect of seeing again and knew that Elon and the fantastic Neuralink team were working their hardest to try and help you, that would give you hope and a more positive outlook on life. If and when they're successful in getting this product out to the masses, how much of a great impact will it have on not only millions of individuals, but also their families and friends? Now, regarding the designation, there's a bunch of formal language on the FDA website, but in plain English, this breakthrough device designation will enable Neuralink to get feedback from the FDA more quickly, get earlier review of their submission, and just speed up the overall process of getting to human trials. For reference, around 150 breakthrough device designations were granted in 2023. Three of Elon's most recent posts on X about Neuralink include this one from the other day, where he elaborated on Neuralink's Blindsight product. The Blindsight device from Neuralink will enable even those who have lost both eyes and their optic nerve to see. Provided the visual cortex is intact, it will even enable those who have been blind from birth to see for the first time. To set expectations correctly, the vision will at first be low resolution, like Atari graphics, but eventually it has the potential to be better than natural vision and enable you to see in infrared, ultraviolet, or even radar wavelengths, like Jordi LaForge. Much appreciated, US FDA. This is a reminder that Neuralink is first gonna help people with neurological disabilities, and then eventually enable almost any sci-fi superpower you can imagine. Whether it's telepathy, quasi-teleportation, seeing in infrared, you'll be able to do all sorts of ridiculous superhuman things that were once considered impossible. Another post Elon had on X is this one, where he said, at some point, having a Neuralink will be normal. Sure, 
people right now may think surgically implanting a brain chip is entirely off limits. However, over time, people will start to know a close family member or friend who gets one, and they'll inevitably be a little more comfortable and okay with the idea of Uncle E poking around. Okay, well admittedly, it's understandable to be a little concerned. The brain is a critical organ, arguably the most important organ in our bodies. So it's logical you'd want to carefully weigh the risk-reward ratio of undergoing the surgery. This ratio is very different, however, for someone with a debilitating brain or spine condition. So during the next decade or so, healthy people will just need to wait while the technology matures. And then, once we're able to get these devices, I completely agree with Elon. Having a Neuralink, an implanted brain-computer interface, will be normal. Heck, the next generation of kids will grow up with Neuralinks being commonplace. And whether you like it or not, this future is coming, so prepare accordingly. Also, I know it's a gray area, but please go ahead and write in the comments section when you think having a Neuralink will be normal. Another post from Elon was his guess as to what's achievable for Neuralink's rate of implantation. He says, over 1,000 is achievable in 2026. Given that Neuralink is likely going to implant in a handful more participants this year, they'd have to ramp up quite quickly to hit that. But if any team can do it, I believe it's this one. Now let's move on to a breakthrough development from this group at University of California at Davis, where the Department of Neurological Surgery implanted four Utah arrays into speech motor cortex. The result is that they successfully converted attempted speech, or thoughts, to text with nearly 98% accuracy. This is a remarkable achievement, and what's even more remarkable is if you consider the possibilities of what could be achieved down the road. These four Utah arrays, each having 64 channels, so 256 channels of neural data, and meanwhile, Neuralink is currently working on devices that will have 16,000 channels, and eventually millions of channels. As you probably know by now, the first Neuralink participant, Nolan Arbaugh, is a young man with a fantastic attitude. But as you can imagine, after suffering a major setback, he no longer had the freedom to roam as he once did. This is some of what he shared in a recent post on X. Since becoming the first participant at Neuralink, I've realized there's so much more opportunity in the world for me than I would have ever previously imagined. I used to have such wanderlust. I was someone whose life was determined by the direction of the wind, going wherever my feet would take me. I love to travel and experience everything. Nothing was off limits. After my accident, I thought that part of me was dead forever. Thank God that wasn't the case. I hope to travel much more and go everywhere I wanted to before my injury. Nolan also had this to say when he talked to the Neuralink team at the offices in Fremont, California. Everyone that I've met has just been so impressive, like so amazing, and y'all are so accommodating to me and my family. Like every step of the way, it's just been it's been amazing. You should be very proud of like what you've built here and the people that y'all have chosen to have around. It's just like y'all are among some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. And like that shouldn't be just kind of glossed over, I guess. Y'all are really incredible. Um, so thank you for everything. He ended with sharing this message of inspiration and hope. Um, not needing any help from anyone, not needing to be adjusted, not needing um to ask you know my parents or my brother to get up in the middle of the night and come you know help me out being able to play it past the time they went to bed it's life-changing it really is it makes it makes being it's gonna sound kind of crazy but it makes being paralyzed really not that bad i think i have a really easy life i just lie around and people do things for me um which is you know pretty nice you know anything that makes me more independent i'm all for and this is probably going to make people like me the most independent that they might ever be until it all gets cured. Like just thinking about someone, say, breaking their neck, going into a hospital and two days later, like getting surgery, getting an implant, something two days later, walking out. It's such a real possibility now. It makes me like so happy that other people don't have to go through this. It's everything I could have ever asked for and to be a part of it and to be helping in some way, to be able to be useful in some way, it completely changed how I live. And since I started doing all this, I'm in bed by like 9, 10 p.m. I'm waking up at like 6, 7 in the morning, just excited for the next day. And that's something that I never thought 
would happen to me ever again. So y'all have given me like a purpose and it's outside of everything else that I've been able to do. It's more than I could ever ask for. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Having freedom and purpose and the ability to use your brain and or body is literally like the Neuralink team giving folks a second shot at life. P2 named Alex or Neuralink second participant in this human trial used to work as an automotive technician. Alex wanted to play video games and fully use a computer, but the assistive quad stick could only help so much. In order to really feel digital freedom, the Neuralink was needed. Now, according to a blog post from Neuralink, he is able to play video games like Counter-Strike. This is a big improvement from using the quad stick as he's now able to move while simultaneously pointing and shooting at targets, rather than doing each task individually. You can imagine how much more burdensome and less effective this approach would be. Alex is also now able to use CAD software to design new products. For example, he designed a custom mount for his own Neuralink charger. The blog post also highlights two other key elements of this implant. The first is that the Neuralink could be used out of the box. That is, Alex connected the Neuralink to his computer and was able to start using it within five minutes. This is a key difference from other prior devices that most in the industry would use as a comparison. Prior devices are more bulky, not wireless, and less easy to set up. And the other highlight from this implantation is that the team has observed no thread retraction in the second participant. This rapid improvement from the initial concern from the first participant is a testament to the hard work and the care of the Neuralink team. Ooh, the newest iPhone just came out. Well, it's pretty much the same as the last phone. Feature development on phones has stalled for over the past few years, and even decade. And whether or not this is an Apple-specific problem, it's time for us humans to consider what feature we want to be a part of. What's the next generation computing device? Meta, Google, and these other tech titans are wanting virtual reality, or VR, and augmented reality, AR devices, to take off. But will they? I have a feeling Google Glass didn't flop because it was a bad product. It flopped because it was a wrong product, which is the same issue Meta's Oculus product and Apple's Vision Pro product are having. These devices aren't practical. No one wants to be isolated behind a screen that's strapped to their face. Also, no other humans want to be around anyone with a permanent recording device eyeing them at the dinner table. Odd as it may sound to some of you, people will be more willing to get surgically implanted brain chips than wear a cell phone strapped to their face for 12 hours a day. And who's building those surgically implanted brain machine interfaces? Elon Musk and the team at Neuralink are the only ones who have the courage to tackle the ridiculously challenging engineering problems required to advance this technology. There's simply too much liability and negative social pressure for Mark Zuckerberg to build a competitor. There's too much legal pressure and pressure from investors for the team at Apple to even consider a project like this. So the Apple problem? Well, by the time the Neuralinks are commonplace, it's going to be way too late for these current tech giants to catch up. You and I and everyone else will be interacting with AI, will be full cyborgs with our Neuralinks, and Tim Apple will have flatlined or dividended the company away. The problem of flatlining innovation, sure, that's an Apple problem. But the problem of not recognizing that Neuralinks are going to be the way everyone interfaces with their digital devices, well, that's something only Neuralink seems to recognize at the moment. That's a problem for everyone else. If you know anyone who lives in the US, UK, or Canada and might benefit from these amazing products, have them apply to the patient registry at www.neuralink.com patient registry. Or if this work sounds inspiring to you, consider joining the Neuralink team. The company currently has a little under 500 employees. And wouldn't it be sweet to join during a time you could substantially contribute in helping blind people see, paralyzed people walk, or deaf people hear? Please subscribe and follow to stay informed about Neuralink. Thanks for watching.